Welcome back to Machine Learning. This video will cover Principal Component Analysis, or PCA. PCA is an unsupervised method of dimensionality reduction. Having a large number of features can make it challenging to train a classifier. We will use PCA to reduce the number of features, which is the same thing as the dimension of the data. First, let's review eigenvalues and eigenvectors, as they're essential for PCA. Remember that an eigenvector and an eigenvalue correspond to a matrix. They don't just exist on their own. A matrix has eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and a vector V is an eigenvector of a matrix A if A times V is equal to a scalar times V. That scalar is called an eigenvalue, and it's represented by lambda. Remember, eigenvectors and eigenvalues do not exist without a transformation or a matrix A. An eigenvector V is one that doesn't change direction when the transformation A is applied. It simply changes length. Each eigenvector has a corresponding eigenvalue. How do we calculate eigenvectors and eigenvalues? Using the so-called characteristic equation. We take A, subtract lambda times I, and then take the determinant of that. Set it equal to zero and solve for the eigenvalues. Remember, I is just the identity matrix. Once we have the eigenvalues, we can find the eigenvectors quite easily. Let's do an example to solidify this concept. We'll start with the 2 by 2 matrix A, and it has 0, 1, negative 2, and negative 3 in it. We take A, subtract lambda times I, which ends up being a square matrix with lambdas on the diagonal. Then we take the determinant of the resulting matrix and set it equal to 0. Remember, the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is the diagonals multiplied together and the second diagonal subtracted from the first. This gives us a quadratic equation in terms of lambda. We can factor this or use the quadratic formula to find our two lambda values. Here we have lambda 1 equals negative 1 and lambda 2 equals negative 2. Now we need to plug these eigenvalues into the original equation, AV equals lambda V, to solve for V. There are many ways to do this. Here, we move all terms to one side of the equation so we can combine V terms. Then we plug in our lambda 1 value, and we get this equation here. We've expanded V1 into V11 and V12, so we can actually perform the matrix multiplication and solve for V11 and V12. This gives us a system of equations, and we can solve for V11 and V12. You will see that the two equations will give us the same result. This is because a scalar multiple of an eigenvector is still an eigenvector, so it's up to us to choose a v that satisfies the equation. Choosing v equals 1, negative 1 works. This little k1 in front is just saying what I just said, which is that any scalar multiple will work. Now we can do the same thing for v2 and we get v2 equals 1, negative 2. We typically want to normalize eigenvectors. We want them to have length 1. We can get them to have a length of 1 by dividing by their length. So we take v1 and divide by the length of v1. What's the length? The L2 norm. We do the same thing for v2, and this is what we get. Now that we're all comfortable with eigenvectors and eigenvalues again, we can jump right into PCA. There are eight steps to the algorithm, as we'll cover it in this class. You'll see that there are many variations of this algorithm. Some will have four steps, some will have 12. It's all the same stuff, just split up differently. Step one, calculate the average for each feature. This will be denoted by X with a little bar over it. Step two, subtract the mean of each feature from every sample. Step three, divide each feature by its standard deviation. We now have a new matrix Z to represent our data, which has been centered and standardized. Step four, compute the covariance matrix like so, Z transpose Z. Step five, compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. Step six, sort the eigenvalues along with the eigenvectors from largest to smallest. Step seven, select the K eigenvectors with the largest eigenvalues. We will call this smaller matrix U. Step eight, project the data onto U. The projected data is referred to Z star, and it is Z times U.
This gives us our data in a new space that has a reduced number of dimensions. Let's go through an example to see that it isn't all bad. We have some two-dimensional data. This just means that we have two features, x1 and x2. I have the data in a table here on the left and plot it on the right. First, we need to calculate the average for each feature. And we get the average for x1 is 3.07, and the average for x2 is 3.23. Now we need to subtract the mean of each feature from every sample, and we get this new data on the right. This data is referred to as centered, because if we were to calculate the mean of both features, now they would both be zero. So we shifted the data to the origin. So it's centered, and it looks like this. I've changed the axes just so that everything's equivalent, so it's from negative 4 to positive 4 on both the x and y axis, so that when we plot the principal components, it looks nice. Next, we need to divide each feature by its standard deviation. Remember that the standard deviation is calculated like this. You take every sample, subtract the mean, and square the result, summing them all up, dividing by the number of samples, and then taking the square root. Lucky for us, we've already subtracted the mean. We find the standard devi deviation of feature 1, and we get 1.38, and for feature 2, we get 1.88. Dividing by the standard deviation, we now have the data on the right. And here it is plotted. We can see that the standardized data takes up less space than the centered data. This becomes our Z matrix, which is our original data centered and standardized. We're done with all our data processing, so now we can get to the meat of the algorithm. We need to compute our covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is computed by Z transpose Z, which gives us some sense of how the features vary with respect to each other. This operation will give us a 2 by 2 matrix. This is true for any number of features. Here we have two features, but if we had D features, we would have a D by D matrix as our covariance matrix. Now we compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. We have our eigenvector equation on the left. And we replaced A with the covariance matrix. We use the characteristic equation. Reducing the left side of the equation gives us this. Taking the determinant gives us this equation. Reducing that gives us a quadratic equation that is set equal to zero. Using the quadratic formula, we get the following eigenvalues. Now we just need to plug these eigenvalues in and solve for the eigenvectors. Let's start with the first, which is the largest, eigenvector. We reduce the equation and we find that V1 is 0 0.999 times V2. And so choosing the value 1 for V2 gives us a value of 0 0.999 for V1. Repeating this process to find the second eigenvector, we get negative 0 0.999 and 1. On to step 6. We need to sort the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors from largest to smallest. Here, this is trivial because we only have two eigenvectors. The first one is associated with the largest eigenvalue of 24.008, and the second one has an eigenvalue of 1.991. I almost forgot a step. Don't forget, you have to normalize the eigenvectors so they have length 1. Now we need to select the k largest eigenvectors and construct the matrix U. Since we only have two dimensions, let's see what our data looks like in one dimension, so we'll choose k equals 1. Finally, we project the data onto U. U represents the lower dimensional space. We do this with a simple matrix multiplication operation. We have the original data plotted on a gray background, then projected data on the white background below it. Actually, I updated this slide. We have the original data up here, up top, right? And then we have the projected data down here below. So this is what the data looks like if we project it onto the first principal component. The eigenvectors that are extracted using this method are actually called principal components. They describe the variance in the data. 
If we look at the data, we can see that it varies most in this direction and a little bit in this direction. So let's plot our eigenvectors and see what they look like. If we plot our first eigenvector, that is the one with the largest eigenvalue, we can see that it actually describes the direction which varies the most. And if we plot the second eigenvector, that is the one with the second highest eigenvalue, and in our case, the only other eigenvector, we see that it plots this green one. And we see that it describes the dimension, uh, the second dimension of variance. The principal components will always be perpendicular or orthogonal. That's pretty much it for the standard PCA algorithm. In this video, we covered principal component analysis, an unsupervised approach to dimensionality reduction.